Okay, I'm back after a long break. Uh, last time we did Ubuntu systems and we just did a basic coverage of them. But this time around what we're going to do is we're going to go into Red Hat and from there we are going to set up an entire system and work through it. So when we get back after the credits, we'll dive into it. Okay, we're back. So as I said before, we're going to jump into setting up a Fedora system. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the screen and we're going to talk about all the various systems that we're going to need. So this is going to be a fairly boring episode, but I'm just going to go over the basics, cover what we're going to set up and why we're setting these things up. And from there, then we're going to roll into the next episodes of the playlist. Hopefully, I'll be able to bang one of these off every week for you. I'm doing this in my spare time. But uh, let's jump into a screenshot and get started. So what we got is we're going to start off the system with a virtual uh, environment. And what we're going to be using is actually Debian based, not Red Hat based, and it's called Proxbox. The reason we're going to be using Proxmox is because we want to set this up so that it can back up to the Proxmox backup server. There's many ways to back up, but this is a really, really easy one. You set up the Proxmox system, you set up the Proxmox backup system, then when you start setting up your various servers on the Proxmox, you just tell it to back up to the Proxmox server. And uh, you set up your schedule, your timing, how much space you want, how often you want it to do it, and the way it goes. It takes care of it in the background. So it's a really efficient, nice backup system for your virtual machines that are all gonna be sitting in your hypervisor dashboard of Proxmox. So past that, we're gonna go into Red Hat. Now, Red Hat is the enterprise level of the RHEL system, uh, the Ubuntu, Debian-based, uh, and Fedora RHEL-based. Now, Red Hat Enterprise costs money, subscription, etc., etc. Fedora doesn't. Fedora comes in multiple different flavors, uh, but essentially you've got workstation and a bunch of different types. You've got your Cinnamon, your X-Face, your Gnome, you've, you've got a bunch of different types of desktops to work with. And then you've got the server side of it, which is uh, basically the command line interface. And it just sits there running on the hypervisor in the back end and you set up tasks in that. So everything we're gonna do is basically Fedora RHEL uh, based system. We're gonna be using another Red Hat technology called Cockpit. So what Cockpit is, is it's a web-based, almost like a hypervisor, but it's kind of different. It uh, is more for managing your servers. You can use it like a hypervisor, like Proxmox, but more than that, it's a way to run updates, push out distros. You could push out images to workstations. You can install software. Uh, you can do crucial things to all of your systems that are registered within the cockpit uh, interface or the cockpit glass. Um, so next we're gonna move on to ClearOS. ClearOS is going to be installed in cockpit um, for multiple instances for multiple purposes. It has, again, a web-faced interface and it allows you to install things such as your Active Directory server, your DNS server, your mail servers, your file servers. All of those types of things can be set up individual or on one instance or however you want to do it. Um, the good thing about ClearOS is you do have that uh, glass interface again or uh, a web CLI to work with, or not CLI, but a um, web-based GUI. Uh, so you, you could do everything you know with a mouse and keyboard and stuff and not have to be super, super fluid at command line setting up of server profiles and things. And it takes care of a lot of that for you. So we're gonna be using that for simplicity's sake. Uh, and anything that we can't set up using that, 
again, we can come back and set up using the Fedora server. So with the Fedora server, the first thing that we're going to be putting on there will be GLPI. Now, what GLPI is a, again, a web interface, but it allows you to set up your asset tracking and monitoring, your infrastructure and operations uh, monitoring and tracking, uh, documentation, and uh, inventory of all of your uh, IT management stuff. And along with that, it does come with a help desk system and uh, public portals. So you can, you can do a lot with it. I haven't yet set it up. This will be the first time I've set it up outside of my NAS box. However, my NAS box, I just set it up on there because it was an option. I wanted to see what it was. So I actually really like it over some of the solutions I was using before. And I think that this will probably be my, sorry, if I can learn to speak, probably be my main IT management interface. Now, coming back to Fedora server again, we'll probably set another instance of Fedora up in cockpit. And on that, we're going to be installing Dollabar. Now, Dollabar can be, uh, like, like GLPI, it can be installed in either RHEL or Debian-based. But however, we're going to be putting it in the RHEL base because that's what this playlist is about. And what it is, is it is an ERP and CRM suite, which basically lets you billing, invoicing, accounts payable, um, based either single or double point of entry uh, accounting, uh, human resources management, um, pay scaling, um, project management, uh, documentation or a document control, both of those, um, and account control. And again, it's fully tied back into the Active Directory so that you set your permissions and things and when somebody logs in from your organization through this, they'll get access to what they get access to. Um, it's a really good system. Haven't really worked with it, but I have installed it before and looked around with it and checked out a bunch of reviews and things. It is a very capable and scalable system. So there you have it. That's pretty much what we're going to go over. And let me just switch back here. Now. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to go over all of those. We're going to break them down individually. We may be adding more into the mix. Um, I don't think we're going to be removing anything. All of those are necessary. And then as we move, this is going to be new to me, setting a lot of these up. Um, a few of them I have set up before, but I've not really used them all in conjunction. What I'm hoping to do also is then start another playlist after this one, following up with creating images, you know, having those in cockpit, rolling those out to laptops and desktops, um, deploying specialty software, uh, going through the whole process of like a customer creates a work order, you get the work order, you send it over for authorization from a supervisor, the supervisor authorizes it. Now you can go in and use the um, management tools to push out that software or whatever. So I'm going to go through the kind of the whole work process in another play, playlist of how you would now utilize this software and how you could, you could see how it would benefit a small business or even a medium business. Um, again, moving to larger businesses, you're going to probably be much more inclined to move into a Microsoft environment using Microsoft Power Tools and other professional pay for service um, solutions, ERM, CRM, help desk management, etc. There are there's some really, really fine products out there that uh, cost a little bit of money. So that's where we're going to be going. And I hope that you've um, got the idea of what I'm getting up to. Uh, the thing is, I'm a bit rusty. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so pardon me for yammering through it and explaining it. But uh, with any luck, the next one should be a bit better. So on that note, next time.